you could barely hear him, but Marshawn Lynch was saying we play football. It's a team sport. Uh, Carol says blame, but coach, let's talk accountability. So this is coach on coach, Herm Edwards joining us. Um, now that you obviously have been able to digest what happened, full 24 hours, almost. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about accountability. How much actually goes out to Pete Carroll? Well, he has to be accountable for it because he's head coach. Now, um, obviously, did he call the play? I don't know about that, but but he was okay with the play. And, and I think we can, sit, we can sit here and second guess the coach. Obviously, this is what we get to do. Um, but we won't give enough credit, really, to the defensive players that made the play. I mean, it started with Brandon Browner. He did an excellent job of really not allowing Kirsch to get up on Butler to try to run the rub play. And this is a play you see a lot in football. They actually talked about they ran it in practice. He got beat. Butler got beat on this play. So not only was it a great play, it was a great interception, to be quite honest, because that's a very difficult catch. For a young guy that just had got beaten on a play where he tipped the ball and Kirsch was laying on the ground, yeah. and it's all of a sudden he went from maybe I'm going to be the GOAT, yeah. of all of a sudden I'm the hero. So uh, the way this play was designed, obviously, it was designed to get a, to get a rub where uh, you know Lockett could get inside and catch the football, obviously. Didn't happen. Uh, and now he's gonna we're going to second-guess Coach saying we should have ran the football. And, a lot of people will agree with that. Uh, you probably should have ran the football before you decided to throw it. All right, so let's issue it out. So Coach gets how much? Even the, Coach Carroll gets what? What? Well, yeah. he, he didn't really want it. He took the blame. Yeah, and he, Wilson he, took the blame. They're all, and, and that's a great team. Yeah. Because they're, and even the offensive coordinators take a little bit of the blame, and he's yeah. saying, "Well, the receiver, uh, uh, forget all that." This kid made a great play defensively, and I get what he's saying about the receiver, but it started with Brandon Browner. He was, the, he was the, the main guy that really made this thing work defensively because of the jam that he got on Kurtz. I mean, he did a wonderful job of stoning him right at the line where they couldn't get the rub. And then Butler read it, ran inside, and, and caught the football. All right, Stephen A., uh, are you holding uh, Coach Carroll accountable this morning? Absolutely. Uh, the buck stops with him. Um, and I'm not holding him accountable just because of the play but because of the magnitude of what even allowing the play to be called says. You have to remember you cannot ignore the fact that Percy Harvin was let go. He was traded to the Jets. That Golden Tate was allowed to leave in the offseason. And the reason for that was that, according to these players and this team, as great as they are, our identity is about the Legion of Boom, our physicality, Marshawn Lynch. That's where, that's who we are. So in the end, you're Pete Carroll. You went against who you are as a team in this particular situation. And that begs the question as to why that is. And that leads me to lean on Skip Bayless and what Skip Bayless said. Pete Carroll and that ego of his, it seemed to me, and I say this, Coach, from time to time, Certainly, this isn't an applicable in, in, in all or even most situations. But there are rare occasions where we're always lamenting the ego of the athlete. And we never bring into question the ego of coaches from time to time. And how folks lead themselves to make certain decisions. It seemed to me that Pete Carroll was more interested in Russell Wilson coming to the rescue than just winning the football game. Now, I, you might sit there and say that's an accusation, but when you consider what the options were, the position that you're in, being on a one-yard line, 20 seconds left, a timeout mm -hmm. with at least two chances, if not three, to give the football to beast mode, and somehow, some way, this guy that you've leaned on for the last several years, you don't give the ball to in that situation, and... It's not because of a read option play or a bootleg for Russell Wilson. It's because you want to throw it to Ricardo Lockett. Really? No. This is about Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll blew this game. New England took it to some degree. We understand otherwise trying to take credit away from them. But when you consider the options that were available to that head coach to make this decision, I'm telling you right now, this is going to haunt Pete Carroll for many, many years, if not the rest of his career. A Super Bowl championship was lost last night because this man didn't call Marshawn Lynch's number. After that's the guy whose number you called all these years. Inexcusable.
So, Coach Harm. Yes, sir. I've covered uh, I've covered a number of defensive-minded head coaches who always reserve the right on play calling. To um, uh, uh, let me give you one example: Jimmy Johnson, defensive-minded, leaned on his offensive coordinator, but always wanted the right to say at the last second, "Throw it or run it." Then you pick the play, offensive coordinator. You choose the run or you choose the pass that you want to call. But I want you to run it or I want you to throw it. Is that how you did business? Is it, was that your your style? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it kind of works this way, Skip. You make a great point. Obviously, when a big play occurs, and it was the big play, obviously, when when Curse caught the ball on his back, uh, they're scrambling to get lined up, obviously, because the, the clock is working, and then they take a timeout, and then you're going to run Lynch. Basically, at that point, you know, I'm in the mode of saying, let's run it in. What, what are our best runs? Let's get our best player to football. Now, that's that's my opinion. That's what how, how I would do it. Now, you know, I don't know what obviously right. uh, what Pete was thinking, but that that's the mode that I would operate in. Okay, so just to be fair here, is it possible that Pete was covering for Daryl Bevel, his coordinator, who actually made the call, maybe against Pete's better judgment? I don't know. Did did he take the bullet for the team, so to speak? Is it possible that Pete really wanted to run the ball and Daryl called a pass play? Maybe, but but you know when you sit there and then the series happens, when you, the mindset of, of you right now, you know when that happens, when the big play happens down the boundary, you got to collect yourself and say, okay, what what are we going? What are we doing, coach? As you're yeah. as you're coming out, you're going, okay, I want to run it in now. We get this ball down inside the one yard line. We got to give it to Lynch, our best guy. And the fact they still got a timeout. Now I don't know if you if they, let's say yeah. they run the first one, they don't get it in. They're going to call a timeout. I don't know if you can run the ball two more times I, because I don't think you have enough Maybe time. Not. I think at that point in time, you might have to throw. OK, but the first option, and in my opinion, would have been to run Lynch. That, 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 that's, that, that's just me. Now, now, Pete decided we had a play called. If it was if it was run right, obviously, they might have had a touchdown. But you got to give New England a lot of credit because they stoned the play. OK, they saw it. OK, Guys. just for the record. Dar uh, real quick, Stephen A. Daryl Bevel, just for the record, has an ego too here. He's got a reputation for calling slick trick plays, so he, he might have been trying to out cute everyone, trying to fool everyone with ah, a little pop pass, a little slant for the one yard touchdown. J just it, it could be both of them together. But go ahead, Stephen A. I can't believe what I'm hearing from y'all right now. I'm not going to lie. There's no maybe about this. Pete Carroll left USC. Pete Carroll got, if I remember correctly, a $36 million contract. He's the boss, okay? It's the Super Bowl. It's 20 seconds left. You are the head coach. A Super Bowl championship is on the line. And y'all going to tell me that he had nothing to do with the call or it's possible? No way. Pete Carroll, there is no way on earth you can convince me that the offensive coordinator, even though I'm quite sure he could draw up a play or whatever, there is no way on earth you can convince me that that play was not the authority of Pete Carroll. It was directly on him. I don't want to hear about the offensive coordinator. I mean, of course, the kind of play that may have been called or whatever, all right, that's fine. And you can look at Russell Wilson, too, because he could have thrown the pass lower. He could have thrown it a little bit behind, so it wouldn't have been easier for Butler to get. He could have sat there and called an audible on a play like he did in the NFC Championship game and ran the bootleg or the readout. He could have done something like that, too. But ultimately, this is Pete Carroll. If there is ever a moment when a head coach is present, it's in that moment. 20 seconds left, down by four, needing a touchdown to win a Super Bowl championship. And he's sitting there, standing there. All right, Bar Darryl, Bar what, what you going to do for me? Really? No, no, I can't buy that. Well, I can't it, buy that, guys. Stephen A., no, I'm, I'm agreeing. I mean, it's on the head coach, regardless of how the play came down or, 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 or what Darryl Bevel decided. I mean, you, you always have the last say. You just flat say, hey, look, coach, I'm running it. No, I'm running it. We're going to run it in. The next two times uh, we have the ball down here after the big play, we're running the football, period. We got a timeout. One more timeout left. We're running it. And, and that's, what, that's the conversation you have to have with the OC at that point in time.
Hey, Stephen A., I seriously doubt this happened, but isn't there a third possibility here? And you just mentioned what happened in the NFC Championship game. Are you sure that Russell Wilson didn't audible to the pass? I doubt it very seriously, but it's still a possibility. I, I don't think so, Skip, because the way that Russell Wilson was spewing me a culpa yesterday, Russell Wilson is grown enough, he's adult enough, his character is impeccable. You saw the approach that he took yesterday. If he had audibled, he would have said he audibled. The fact is, is that maybe, that was the maybe. play that was called. Well, I mean, yeah. if you admit and everything else is your fault, why wouldn't you admit you audibled? So the point is, is that it's not right. about that. Pete Carroll wanted to put the ball in Russell Wilson's hands instead of Marshawn Lynch's hands. That's what this comes down to. All right. Uh, so, so, Coach, yeah. my, real quick, Kerry, yeah. my, my bottom line here is Pete Carroll coaches, and look, I love the guy, and I respect the way he coaches, but, but he can get pretty arrogant. He can get pretty full of himself. I believe that in the end he saw an opportunity to take a young quarterback that he chose in the third round and said, watch how great this kid can be. The kid outplayed Peyton Manning in last year's Super Bowl. He was on the precipice of outbraiding Tom Brady in this Super Bowl, and he wanted to let him finish it off with a little pop touchdown pass on a slant to lock it. And it, it could have won Russell Wilson, the MVP of the Super Bowl. That's what, again, just being a little too cocky, a little too cute, that's Pete Carroll. And I think he, he got caught up in his own hubris and bravado. Well, if you think about it, Skip and Stephen A., with the big play that happened prior, with the curse play, mm. Russell Wilson still wins the MVP if they score a touchdown, whether he throws it or not. If they run it in and score a touchdown, mm. Russell Wilson's the MVP because he, remember, Russell Wilson in the first That's half Matthews. with 20, with, with 20 something I seconds, don't know. With, yeah. what I'm ask is with 20 something seconds before the first half, he takes that team down and scores, gets it tied up. Mm -hmm. At the end, when he's got to make a couple throws, he makes a couple throws and he gets it right back down there. So I, 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 I don't know. I don't I, know. I think it might be Chris Matthews. It, it maybe, maybe yeah. it's Chris Matthews. And, but and what about Marshawn? Marshawn. What, what if Marshawn, Marshawn scores his second touchdown? It, it, maybe him know. too. I mean, yeah, all I know is this: that they threw it 21 times and they should have thrown the 20. <laughs> and, and Tom Brady threw it 50. Uh huh. And, and that was yeah. Like, <laughs> this was a great football game, guys. At the end of the day, this is one of the better Super Bowls that I've witnessed. Yeah, and that's what we needed—just a great Super oh. Bowl. After last year's, we definitely needed a good one. Good. Thank you, Coach, for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, so, as Coach has just said, the Patriots rallied for the win, but do they deserve the credit? Eric Allen will join us after the break to discuss it even more. Coach Herm Edwards, excellent as usual. We'll be right back in just a few moments.